Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And uh, in this video, we're going to talk about one of the most important topics that we cover in the channel over and over again, which is the topic of leadership. Um, I believe that lack of leadership, no matter what country you go into, even in the United States, no matter where you go, pretty much any business, lack of leadership is the number one problem of society. And most leaders do not understand their shortcomings in the field of leadership. And we're just going to kind of uh, delve into that and my frustration. So here's the thing. Uh, when I was a kid, I never, ever thought I ever wanted to be a leader, right? I wanted to just sit back. I was pretty much an introvert, play some video games, watch some TV, watch movies, and then hang out and chill, right? And the only reason I ever thought about leadership is because some at a certain point, there were people who I've interacted with, done consulting. There came a point where they all just kind of told me the same thing. They said, hey, uh, you're a great captain of the ship. Or, hey, like you have incredible leadership qualities. Like, And they just blurred out. Or they blurred out things like, you're the best. And I'm like, what? I was never told this as a kid. And one of the re reasons why... Um, one of the reasons why I think I got that kind of feedback is because there was a certain point in my life um, as a young adult where I was disappointed by every single, almost every single person who was supposed to either be a mentor, teacher, um, even a teammate. And I realized, wow, like I can't be the only person experiencing this, right? Like there just came a certain point where I just realized I had to step it up. Because if I don't step it up, at least for myself, I'm going to drown. Because if no one else is going to help me when I'm drowning, at least I'm going to teach myself how to swim. And then hopefully I'll teach other people how to swim, right? And so that's really why I, I really focused on the topic of leadership is because I'm here where I am. Because I believe that leadership qualities are easy to teach. But a lot of the things that, that make bad leaders are kind of uh, promoted in society. And it's really funny because I was watching this YouTube video about a topic kind of similar to this, although it, it's it's in a the 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 some the channel has a very different direction from this one. But he was talking about that basically introverts are now forced to do the work of extroverts because society is kind of fallen, right? And so that I think that's where I'm at, where I'm originally an introvert, but because I was forced to be in a position where everybody was let, letting me down, now I'm faced to do the work of extroverts because who's else, who else is going to step it up, right? So just going off of that, um, you know, we can kind of clearly see why that's a topic I'm so focused on. Okay, now if you ever type in Google "lack of leadership," um. There's an interesting um, explanation here where it says, uh, you know, what is a lack of leadership? It's the ability, inability to lead, lead and, you know, the lack of direction. So this often stems from a leader's own lack of vision and goals, not setting goals, unclear expectations, visions and directions leads to frustration and confusion on both ends. And that's how I felt many, many times when I expected to either learn from someone or work for someone or you know, um, just hoping that that they would provide like provide for me something because they were in a position of uh, implied leadership. And then again, experiencing that for many many years, you just realize, okay, I, I have to step it up. I have to learn this skill that is obviously lacking wherever I go, and or else I'm just going to be frustrated for the less rest of my life, right? So. The reason that I think there's such a lack of leadership is because, um, and this doesn't just apply to leadership, this applies to many, many things, right? Is that people don't just want the benefits of something, but they don't want the responsibilities. And you kind of see that kind of attitude everywhere, which is why most things are a mess, right? So here in this list is kind of a, examples of lack of leadership that I think I've experienced, but I think you've probably experienced that some of your life from some part of your life too. So 
Number one is just basically people that you depended on who are teachers, um, maybe even your parents, you know, authority figures, even your coworkers or teammates just let you down when you needed them, right? So they basically let you drown. You're struggling, you call for help, and they act like, I didn't hear anything and just move on, right? And it's not like, and it's kind of curious that this is how a lot of society operates. I'm just blown away that that most people, and that, I think that's why so many people just isolate and are depressed because, you know, the people that they were supposed to depend on, which is what you're essentially your tribe, just not was not there for you when when you needed them okay and again i think the bar is so low i really think the bar is so low that if you just do the exact opposite of things that i'm going to talk about you'll stand out about above 95 percent of the population you'll you'll seem to have these leadership qualities and if you can establish your own business no matter what field you're in where you do the exact opposite of the things that i'm talking about you're essentially going to win. You just have to have a little bit of perseverance. You may have a little people making fun of you for a little bit because you're doing things a little bit differently from other people. But if you just do the exact opposite of what I'm talking about and you're able to stick the landing and, and persevere, you're going to, you're, I think you're going to make it big. Number two, treat. So as a leader, you treat your mentees, employees, tenants, students, or whoever that you're assigned to chart, take, uh, assigned to take care of it, like annoyances, right? So I remember many, many times in my life where people will, will kind of do this thing where it's like, yeah, I'm here to help you. And then like, I ask for that help and they act like they're annoyed. And I'm like, okay. And then, so thanks for training me like to, to not reach out to you, right? Uh, but here's the thing, right? The, the secret to getting people to pay, especially if you're in some sort of like a consulting or authoritative position like a landlord, is just to quickly respond to um, to anybody, you know, a paying customer's concerns or needs, right? If they're not a paying customer, then you can kind of wait a day or two. But if they're a paying customer, you got to you gotta attend to their needs, right? So that's why my tenant, who pays six months in advance, she bear that that you know that tenant barely um bothers me or sends me a message, right? It's like once in a blue moon. But once I get that message from the tenant, I am on it. Right? I am on it because I want to see that six month check as soon as possible when the rent is due. And I know if I uh, address the tenant's concerns as possible, somehow the the paycheck the, the 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 rent will slip out of the tenant's hand and into mine. Whereas if I take my time and drag my feet and, and try to say, well, you know, this is your fault, blah, blah, blah. You know, human psychology kind of works in strange, mysterious ways where that rent check isn't going to slip out of the tenant's hand so easily, right? And that's what I mean. Like, you know, you don't treat the people you're assigned to take care of as an annoyance. I remember every time I've experienced that behavior, I mentally checked out with the people who did that to me and they act like they couldn't understand why. But if you look at the statistics, you know, out there, you know, there's that quiet com uh, quitting phenomenon where people just check out because, again, there's that lack of leadership um, to the people who are meant to be led. Right. So you cannot treat anybody especially the people you're assigned to take care of, especially paying customers like their annoyances. But this happens in business all the time, right? And that's why I said like, hey, if you just do the exact opposite of what I talk about here, uh, you're going to win, okay? So number three, one of the things that leaders are terribly bad at is that they feel like they have to be the smartest person in the room. So if you ever read the book, The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, um, the number one rule, it says never outshine the master, right? And and Robert Greene, I saw his interviews. He's like, oh, I worked in many, many industries and, you know, especially in places like Hollywood. It's so Machiavellian. And I'm thinking, you know, this is just me being selfish and lazy. If I'm a leader of the business, right, I want to be the dumbest person on the planet. And I want everyone else to work, be smarter and work harder than me so I can just like sit back, relax and collect the cash. Right. And so if I 
ever been in a position where I'm jealous of other people's accomplishments, that's insane because I want to be an organization where I'm at the top and everyone else is smarter and working harder than me so that I can make the moolah, right? But the reason why so many businesses are so terrible is because talent isn't allowed to flourish because, you know, the hierarchy enforces that the person on top should imply that they're smarter than you. Right. And that's why I think a lot of employees get frustrated in in their workplaces. So they just kind of jump, you know, jump ship to another job where it's, you know, they're more likely to get a senior position in another job than at their current job. Right. But th that's the thing. Right. You can't be jealous of the other people's accomplishments because that's society that that's a society or an organization that's not going to grow and flourish because every everybody's efforts is meant to keep the person below them down. And that's where all the energy is rather than learning and growing together. And I know that if I'm leading whoever or mentoring somebody else, I want them to do better than me. Like, Hey, if you know how to get real estate deals really easy without any effort, I want to work with you because, you know, I had to send 200 letters to get a deal. And the thought that I have to do that again, and I'm probably going to do that within the next year or so just to get another deal is kind of giving me a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say anxiety. I just don't want to do it because I'm lazy. So if I could work with someone else who's going to do that effort and make it seem easy on their part and they, they can just help me find a deal, I want to work with you. I want you I want you to be better than me in every single aspect of whatever it is I'm doing, right? So that's number three, which is you know being jealous of other people's accomplishments, especially people who are, quote, lower in, in the ladder um, than you, okay? The other thing that that really has ir that irked me a long time ago is just promising training and not providing it. Like you ever like been to a workplace where they talked about, oh, well, you're gonna provide training, and then like they never did it, right? This has happened to almost like ninety. I won't say hundred percent, but almost like ninety percent of the places that I ever worked with. I remember I worked fast food, and and I was like a, a shift manager, and they never taught me how to how to create a hamburger. It was really weird. And I worked there for a month and then quit because it was like so stressful and ridiculous. Like, how am I supposed to work if I'm not trained to create a hamburger? And what's up with all these bizarre expectations if we're not, you know, training to, to meet those expectations? And if you don't know anything about fast food, basically every time uh, a car enters a driveway, there's a timer that goes off. And then if you, you don't meet, let's say, like a two-minute timer to make your food and, uh, you know, make sure the customer's paid out the window um, and, and get them on their way, then you're going to get like, why didn't you make that time? I'm like, dude, there's no training. Where's the training? I never really trained how to make a hamburger. I was just – I was a shift supervisor for like one month, and then I'm, I don't even know how I got that job. Uh, but I got paid pretty, pretty pitifully. But – like I, I was making, you know, I was in charge of making hamburgers, but they never trained me, right? And, and you know, I've experienced this in all a lot of bunch of other things too. So, so basically, you know, I have to make sure that I have to train others and and set the expectation for other people and not get mad at things that that were never discussed. And I think this is a a, a many a big uh, short side of many leaders and why turnover is so high in many. Uh, organizations in many fields, right? It's just, they want to just churn and burn, churn and burn. And so just, you know, investing in the people that they're they're working with, they just kind of treat them like annoyance. And so that's kind of related to point number two. Now, here's the other thing. I get that, you know, people at the other side don't always do their job. So for example, if you're a teacher, you may work with the worst students and you may be the best teacher ever. And if the students don't do their job, it's going to make your life miserable, right? So I get that. I've been I've been there. You know, you could be the bo best boss, you know, manager in the world, and your employees could all be duds. I totally get that. That's why the movie Extract was made by Mike Judge, kind of as like a counter to the movie Office Space, even though nobody really knows the movie Extract. Extract is like where you're disappointed as the boss. Office Space is like where you're disappointed as the worker, right? I get that. But here's the thing. If you're a leader, just make sure that you do your job so well that if the other person doesn't do their job, they essentially have to blame themselves, right? That is the most important thing 
that you have to do. So again, as I said before, you just do the opposite of most things. You're going to uh, stand out and you just have some grit, perseverance. You help others. You show them that you care. Um, I know that, that you know, you're going to flourish. And here's the thing. I don't think it's a coincidence that even though I started this YouTube channel about a month ago, because I keep repeating these values over and over again, and also talk about hot topic like velocity banking, I think that's why people are attracted to the things of, that this, we've discussed in this channel, because it's so lacking. And then they hear it's like, whoa, you know, I, I need that, right? No matter what age you are. And I think it's not a coincidence that a lot of older people have contacted um, me and put you know their information on the forum because they're they're looking for that guidance and leadership even from younger people like I, that that thought as a younger person um would have blown my mind that older people would be looking for guidance from me because as a kid every single older person was telling me I know nothing so there must I therefore I must follow them right and it turns out they didn't know nothing either so it was like the blind leading blind okay all right. So uh, this is Korean Atlanta uh, Mentorship. If you're interested in joining our group, um, go ahead and click the link down below, uh, fill out the Google form and submit it. Uh, you could also email us by going to the about section of the YouTube page and then go ahead and email us out there uh, and, and, you know, just say, hey, I'm interested in joining your group. Um, if you have any questions, comment soon below and we will uh, speak next time.